Hi folks, HR Funk back with you today. I'm taking a break from the rifles and I'm going to instead talk about handguns. Specifically what I'm going to be talking about today is semi-automatic handgun malfunctions, their causes and what you can do to try to remedy them. I'm going to be working with my Smith & Wesson Model 39A as my demonstration firearm today to try to show the different types of malfunctions and I'm not going to try to cover every single malfunction that there are that can occur with a semi-automatic handgun. But I'm going to try to hit the major ones, talk a little bit about what you can do to clear those malfunctions, uh, maybe even a little bit about what has caused them in the first place and what you can do to remedy those permanently. The reason for this video is a comment that I got from one of my viewers the other day who was having a problem with the firearm. Uh, this led to several uh, messages back and forth with me trying to diagnose what the problem was and help them to fix that. And I thought maybe it would be a good idea to just cover some of these in general. So if anyone else has some problems, they would be able to refer to this video as well and hopefully clear up those problems. Before I get into specific malfunctions, I think it's probably worth reviewing the cycle of operation for semi-automatic handguns because really what happens when you have a stoppage or a malfunction in your handgun, there's an interruption, interruption rather in one of those operations in that cycle. The cycle of operation for a semi-automatic handgun is firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding, chambering, and locking. Every time you fire a semi-automatic handgun and there's ammun more ammunition in the magazine, each one of those actions occurs in that sequence. The only time that changes is if you have a straight blowback handgun, you don't have the unlocking and locking. Everything else takes place. But if you have uh, a uh, delayed blowback or recoil operated handgun, each one of those takes place. Now most commonly where you have an interruption is in your feeding and chambering or your extracting and your ejecting. Uh, normally you don't have problems with the locking and unlocking, although depending on what uh, the condition of your handgun is and maybe who's been tinkering with it, you could have some issues with that as well. Same thing, uh, normally if your firearm's in good shape, you're not going to have problems with the, the cocking. Um, however, if there's a problem with it and you have a hammer that follows a slide down or something, you could have a, an issue in that stage of the operation as well. So what I'm going to do next is actually demonstrate the cycle of operation so you can see what's taking place. As I do this, I'm going to be using my pistol. Oh, by the way, I referred to it a minute ago as a 39A. Sorry, I was chambering my Marlin, or uh, channeling rather, my Marlin 22. This is a Smith & Wesson 39-2. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to be also using this training ammunition. Uh, this stuff will not fire. It's safe to use. So this is what I'm going to be using as I demonstrate this cycle of operations so you won't have to worry about seeing me shoot myself in the process, hopefully. Okay, again, we're going to be do demonstrating the cycle of operation. I have my training ammunition loaded into my magazine. And I'm going to load that into my pistol. And I'm going to cycle around into the chamber. Again, you can see it's the training ammunition that's going in there. Now, that cycle of operation demonstrated for you, when I fire the pistol, the expanding gas is what gives the power to the pistol to do all of those operations that I just discussed. So when I squeeze the trigger and the hammer falls, primer detonates, pressure starts to build inside the cartridge, the bullet starts to be driven down the, the uh, barrel. There's an equal and opposite pressure exerted on the breech face, which causes the slide to begin to retract. And that actually went a little bit quicker than I intended to. As it comes back, the extractor, which is right here, pulls on the rim of the cartridge case and pulls it back out or extracts it, as the name implies, from the chamber of the pistol until the rear of the casing contacts this piece right in here, which is the ejector. So now we have fired, extracted, and ejected the spent cartridge. Simultaneously, as the slide came back, it cocked the hammer. Now, the slide is at the rearmost portion of its movement. The recoil spring is completely compressed. It is now going to expand and force the slide back forward. As that happens, the slide is going to strip the top round out of the magazine. 
that is the feeding and is going to force it into the chamber, which is the chambering part of the cycle of operation. Now, contrary to popular belief, the extractor does not snap over the rim of the cartridge case. The rearmost portion of the cartridge case actually slides up along the breech face and the extractor groove lines up, or actually the uh, extractor lines up with that groove and the cartridge slides right up into it. So the extractor is not snapping over the cartridge case each time. So here, I can do this. We're going to demonstrate feeding, chambering. Now, if you watch the rear of that casing, you'll see it slide right up behind the extractor and into the chamber. And the last thing that happens is everything locks back together. So that is our cycle of operation demonstrated for everyone to see. So now that we have a better understanding of how our pistol is supposed to work, let's talk about some of the things that take place when it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. What I'm first going to demonstrate is the number one most common malfunction I see as a firearms instructor with a semi-automatic pistol. And it looks something like this. I'll have a shooter come up to the line with their pistol loaded. They get ready. I give them the command to fire. They come up and go like this. Pistol doesn't fire. Failure to fire. The reason it didn't fire has nothing to do with the pistol. The reason has everything to do with the fact that the shooter forgot to cycle a round of ammunition into the chamber. The first malfunction drill I'm going to show you will solve this problem as well as several other ones. It's been given various names over the years. The most uh, common one currently is the tap rack and ready drill. <clears throat> what happens is you come up and you get that click instead of a bang. Now sometimes it could be that the magazine is not seated and maybe you cycled the, the slide, thought around went into the chamber, but it didn't because the magazine is not locked all the way in place. If the magazine didn't fall out when you did that and you put it into a holster, it's possible that you didn't realize a round didn't chamber. When you come up and get that click, the first thing we're going to do is tap the bottom of the magazine pad to make sure, or uh, base pad rather, to make sure that that magazine is seated. Then we're going to grasp the rear of the slide, push forward with our shooting hand, pull backwards with our, our uh, non-shooting hand. At the same time we do this, I like to invert the pistol. Now why do I invert the pistol? A lot of times you'll see people just do this and keep the pistol in a shooting position the whole time. The reason I do that is because for some of the other malfunctions, this will also clear that and by doing that I have gravity working on my side and I'll demonstrate that one in just a moment. But for our tap, rack, and ready drill, we're going to tap and come right back up on target. Now, if we didn't have a round chambered, there's now a round in the chamber. If our magazine wasn't seated, and that's what caused a round not to be in the chamber, the magazine is seated and we have a round in the chamber, and we are ready to fire if we're still uh, in a, a defensive application, if we're still legally justified in shooting, or in a range setting if we're still allowed to fire based on whatever the course of fire is or whatever the range rules are for that particular moment. But again, you come up, get a click instead of a bang, you're just going to do that, and just that quick, you may well have put your firearm back in service. Now, as I said a moment ago, the most common cause of a failure to fire is someone just forgets to chamber around. Uh, somewhere down the line from there is also the magazine not being completely seated. If you go through the tap rack and ready drill, you know there's a round in the chamber, you squeeze the trigger and you still get a failure to fire, now you've probably got either an ammunition problem, meaning the, the primers are too hard, uh, or more likely you've got a weak hammer spring uh, or possibly a broken firing pin, something along those lines, that's not transmitting the full energy of the hammer spring through the firing pin to the primer of the cartridge and, and causing ignition the way it's supposed to. So if you have some of those issues, you need to get your firearm to a gunsmith or an armorer or back to the original manufacturer to have them take a look at it and figure out why you're getting those failures to fire. The next malfunction I'll talk about is a true stovepipe. The reason I say true stovepipe is because some people will refer to all malfunctions as a stovepipe. A true stovepipe is actually a failure to eject. And what happens 
is the fired cartridge does not make it all the way out of the ejection port before the slide comes back forward and tries to chamber a new cartridge. This can be caused by the shooter again. A lot of malfunctions, by the way, are shooter induced. Usually what happens with this one, especially if you have someone shooting a 45 or a 10 millimeter, something with a little bit more recoil, is they are not using a firm enough grip and they don't have their wrists locked and the pistol sort of free recoils. It's not getting the support that it should from the shooter's hand. So not all of the energy is going to the slide that should be going to the slide because it's being absorbed by the pistol itself in that free recoil movement. And ultimately, the uh, fired casing does not make it all the way out of the chamber or out of the pistol before it tries to chamber a new one. Now, this is a relatively re easy malfunction to clear. We see this casing sticking up here. If we take our hand, the edge of our hand along the top of the slide, we can actually bring that right back out of there and the slide should close. If I come up here, now make sure you don't get your hand in front of the muzzle. But if we come up here over the top, slide that back out just like that, you can see now my chamber is cleared. My uh, round that is in there is actually almost in the chamber, but not quite. Now this is another malfunction that can also occur. If uh, And the most common cause for this is if you pull back the slide to chamber round and then you hold on to it as it goes forward. This is a failure to go completely into battery. So whether it's caused as a result of a stove pipe or if it's caused as a result of not loading properly, i.e. holding on to the uh, slide and riding it forward as you're trying to chamber around, what you want to do is just strike the back of the slide, just like that, and I've now put that round into the chamber and it's ready to fire. So I'm going to demonstrate that one more time just so you can see the whole thing together. Okay, again, here's our stovepipe malfunction right there. I came up, fired, bang, came back down. I see that. I've got to get this thing cleared so I can get my firearm into action. Just coming up here, swiping it away, strike the back of the slide. That time it actually went into battery on its own. And I'm ready to fire if need be. Okay, before we leave the failures to eject, I want to talk a little bit about why I was saying to invert the pistol a while ago. If you get a failure to eject that looks something like this, the round didn't even make it, it didn't even start to make it out of the ejection port before the slide tried to close. When I go to clear this, when I turn the pistol upside down, I went up, bang, I get this kind of a malfunction. I look at it, uh-oh. I'm gonna grab here. I'm gonna invert the pistol, come back up on target. Now, gravity has helped me clear that chamber and my pistol is again ready to fire. Next malfunction I'm gonna talk about is one of the most difficult, um, this was actually pretty close to a true jam. Uh, one of the most difficult malfunctions you can get to clear in the field. It's generically called a double feed. What it truthfully is, is a failure to extract. You can see the fired cartridge, or the fired casing rather, is still in the chamber, and the slide is trying to feed a new cartridge into the chamber. For law enforcement officers, <laughs> or someone in the military, if you get this kind of a malfunction, this is where you want to switch to a backup firearm because it takes a while to clear this malfunction. Um, if you absolutely have to clear it in an emergency, you have to get this magazine out of the magazine well. So you've got to push the magazine uh, release and yank that thing out of there to clear this thing to get it out. I'm not going to do that with this pistol because it's not good for the magazines. But you've got to get that thing out of there. So you would rip it out. Um, if you have another magazine, just drop that one and get ready to load a new magazine. But you've still got to clear this chamber. So you're going to drop the slide. Again, I'm not going to do this because it's extremely hard on the extractor to drop it and have it snap over the rim like I was talking about a while ago. Drop the slide and work on that thing to get that round out of there. Um, maybe it'll come out. If you've got something like a broken extractor, the firearm is done. You're, you're not going to be able to put it back in service in the field. Um, if not, if you can drop it and hook onto that thing and yank it out of there and insert a new magazine into the pistol and get it going, maybe you can get it back up and running again. If uh, you have that sort of a situation, again, in the field and you've got 
a secondary weapon that you can resort to, that's the time to make that transition. Uh, again, it's difficult uh, malfunction to clear, and usually it's indicative of a bigger problem. Either you've got an ammunition incompatibility problem, you've got a broken extractor, uh, or some other issue. Uh, maybe you've got some kind of damage to your chamber, uh, or extremely rough chamber, or you've started to have rust form in the chamber. Something is impeding that casing from being extracted out of the chamber like it should. And again, it's usually indicative of a much bigger problem. How about some other malfunctions you might see? Have you ever been firing, or have you ever seen someone firing, when they've got ammunition in the magazine, they're shooting away, and all of a sudden, the slide locks open, and there's still ammunition in the chamber? This could be a firearms problem, or this could be a shooter problem. Sometimes, more times I think than people realize, what happens is they get their thumb underneath that slide stop. And under recoil, they're actually pushing up on it, and they come down out of recoil, and all of a sudden the slide's locked open, and they think they've got a problem with their firearm. Again, this is actually a shooter problem. If you're having weird malfunctions like that, sometimes what you might want to do is have somebody else shoot your pistol. Um, if only you are experiencing the malfunction and somebody else shoots your pistol and it's running fine, that's a good indication that you need to change something about the way you're shooting. Look at your grip. Um, look at how you're holding the pistol, look at where everything is, and see if there's something you might be doing. I once had a shooter that was firing a, a close quarter drill, and he was experiencing failures to feed. And when I would take his pistol and I would do it, there was never a problem. What I finally figured out, and we were, it was in the winter time, he was wearing heavy clothing, coat, what have you, what I finally figured out is the slide as it came back was actually hitting his coat and not moving through its full range of motion. Uh, once I had him hold the pistol just a short, slight distance forward, a little bit more forward, the malfunction went away. So again, some of the malfunctions you might have can just be because of the way you're holding the firearm or the way you're shooting it. Another malfunction you could experience. Um, this one is indirectly shooter-induced, I'll put it that way. When you go to close the slide and all of a sudden the bullet goes nose down into the feed ramp and won't come out of the magazine. Many times what you'll have, and I again I can't really set it up in this pistol, but it comes forward, the bullet is actually pointing a little bit downward, striking that feed ramp and it won't feed and uh, chamber for you. Usually what happens or what the problem is in that instance is a magazine problem. If you get that with a particular magazine and you've got more than one magazine for that firearm, Switch to a different magazine, shoot it with that, and see if the problem goes away. If it does, that tells you that it's a magazine problem. And a lot of times what has happened is people see the magazine and then they wind up like they do in the movies and blast that thing in there. And if you do that with the slide closed, it's possible to bend the feed lips in the magazine and all of a sudden you're going to induce uh, malfunctions in your pistol, again, because of the way you loaded it. If you continue to have that problem with all your magazines, now it's possible you've damaged all of them if you've you know, done the blast the uh, magazine into your pistol thing. But uh, if not, you could also have a very rough or damaged feed ramp in your pistol. If the round goes part way in, you could have a damaged chamber. Again, it's impeding that movement of the cartridge into the chamber. Um, or it could be your ammunition, especially if you're using reloaded or hand-loaded ammunition and maybe you didn't get it sized down quite enough, now all of a sudden it's not wanting to fit in the chamber. If you have that situation where you have a round that goes partially into the chamber but not all the way, again, that's a good time for the tap rack and ready drill rather than just blast the back of your slide. Because what might happen if you force that thing in there and fire your pistol, you might induce a failure to extract. Now all of a sudden you've got the quote-unquote double feed that I talked about a little while ago, um, and you could potentially even disable your, your pistol by doing that. Whereas with the tap, rack, and ready drill, if you get that bad round out and the next one chambers, again, you're back up and ready to fire without blasting that cartridge into the chamber. I should probably point out that one thing that you can do to reduce the likelihood of, of uh, experiencing malfunctions with your handguns, or your long guns for that matter, is to keep them properly maintained. Keep them clean, keep them properly lubricated, make sure that the springs are all in good shape. If you get 
Springs that are starting to get weak, get them replaced. Uh, that's real easy maintenance to keep your firearm up and running. It'll also cause or uh, save you from having some more serious damage to your firearm if all of a sudden the slide starts cycling uh, faster than it should and battering your frame and stuff like that. So just keep your firearms clean, keep them well maintained, uh, and you won't experience some of these malfunctions with uh, any regularity, and you may not experience some of them at all, hopefully. And there you have it, a real quick video covering semi-automatic handgun malfunctions. Again, this is not every single possible malfunction you could ever have with a semi-automatic handgun. Believe me, I've seen a lot of them on the range. I've seen uh, magazine base plates break off and jettison ammunition all over the range floor. I've seen all kinds of things. But these are probably the most common ones that I've seen. Again, the most common is simply the coming up, squeezing the trigger, getting a click instead of a bang because nobody ever put a round in the chamber to begin with. Beyond that, uh, these other malfunctions that I've talked about, I've seen all of them at one time or another. Uh, I've seen them with just about every kind of pistols. Yes, I've seen Glocks malfunction. I know I'm probably the only one on the planet that's seen that, but I have seen it. And I've seen it with SIGs, I've seen it with Smith & Wessons, I've seen it with Rugers, I've seen it with Colts. Um, I have not yet seen a perfect handgun, semi-automatic handgun, that runs forever and ever and ever and never has a malfunction. There are some very good ones out there, uh, but I've not seen one yet that's perfect. Even revolvers are subject to a few oddball malfunctions here and there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. And until next time, hopefully malfunction-free, good shooting. Bye-bye.